What's going on, everybody? Dylan Napoleon with Cage Side Press, joined today by a 2024 PFL lightweight headed into the semifinal round, the Canadian badass, Michael Dufort. How we doing, brother? I'm good, man. I'm doing good. Training camp is good. I'm not too tired of that at PFL season. So That's good. Ready to, ready to kill, man. Ready to fucking win that Millie. I know it, man. I know you're ready. Well, man, the last time we talked, it was actually before your PFL debut, so two fights ago. And, uh, you know, man, you've been killing it. I'm real happy for you. It's always awesome to see one of the guys that I've been able to connect with. Um, just, just watching you, man, kill it. Because, you know, we met back in when you were fighting regionally here in at Cage Titans, we met, and well, actually, we met a little before that at one of OAM's fights in New York City. Um, yeah. But man, like to watch you get the PFL call and everything like that, and now make the most of the opportunity is super cool. I'm happy for you, bro. Bro, same for me. Like seeing you ascend, like he, you're getting called by Sean Strickland and everything. That's pretty cool. Like it like, was truly a cool moment, doing, you know. Bro, you're doing a good job. So I said they see it. I appreciate it, bro. Coming from you, man, I really do appreciate it. Um, and, you know, thank you. Uh, but, man, let's talk about you, man, because you're in a good spot right now, a special spot, like I said, doing the most with these opportunities that you've been given. These quick turnarounds, Michael, you know, you've been making the most of them, doing great, looking great, although you're no, you're fighting every two months now. Um, you know, how's this yeah. season been treating you, the mind, the body, everything like that? Uh, honestly, uh that's that's pretty hard like uh, <laughs> i'll not lie to you that's pretty hard to fight like every two months like it will be my third fight in four months uh plus a training camp uh, i've been training like uh in florida for the beginning for the, the debut of the year uh, mm -hmm. i've been training like crazy this year yeah so I, I know i'm ready to fight tomorrow so i don't even need that training camp I, i'm doing it but I'm doing it smart now. Uh, I talk with a lot of guys uh, from PFL, and they all they all say the same. Like the third fight is the hardest fight. Of course. Like, uh, yeah. So just just getting like saying saying awake, like seeing ready. Like I just want to be ready. I just want to my body to be good for the the, the big day. Yeah. Um, so that's it, man. I'm just fucking oiling in my muscle. I'm, I'm just like being technically good. Like, I don't need, I don't need to spar like crazy. Like, I just need to be technically ready. Uh, move with the guys, have fun with the guys, and just enjoy the the the, the ride. Yeah, definitely. You mentioned it, kind of. You saw your teammate OAM do this twice in a row, right? Pull it off. And you said maybe you didn't realize how tough it was. Is that kind of what you're getting at? Like you watched it from the sidelines. You obviously knew what was going on. You knew it was hard, but now experiencing it firsthand, is it is it what you expected or is it is it just as a lot harder? Uh it's it's I think like what what PFL is trying to say is it's the hardest thing to accomplish in MMA. And I think it's true. Yeah. Um uh, not a lot of guys can fight like four times in seven months like I know. it's not a year seven months so like ufc fighter fight what twice a year three times right. a year three times a year maybe a year in in, in 12 months yeah. i fight four times in seven months so that that like that is big that is something like art like um yeah so that's it that's fun like pfl is it's it's not even like it's totally different from the UFC because of the activities, but uh, it's so hard, but I like it. I like to yeah. be active. Uh, they found really the right like man it. for the job, bro, because you're doing well. Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, uh, my last fight, uh, I didn't do enough, I think. I should have fucking light the switch, like, Go for the kill, mm -hmm. like I used to do. What I'm going to do to Rabadanov is that I'm going to for, for the kill. Uh, mm -hmm. Every punch, every punch is going to have like intention in it, and every time he's going to shoot, I'm going to stop that shoot and try to finish him. Like uh, I'm going to be dangerous. Like I'm, I'm going to be dangerous from from everywhere. 
that's mm-hmm. the plan. Like, I don't want to be. I don't. I, I am not, and I don't want to be that like safe fighter. He is a safe fighter. I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm a guy that take take like to take take risk, and that's it. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to finish that fight. Yeah, man. I want to talk to you about that fight, of course. Let's talk about that big finish you got in the opening round of the tournament, bro. That was super awesome. You know, Mads Burnell is a game opponent, bro. Like, probably one of the toughest guys in the tournament. I mean, all you guys are tough as nails, but in terms of experience and just, like, overall career highlights and victories and just the he was, you know, UFC vet, stuff like that. The guys, guys as game as they come, bro. That was an a way one hell of a way to open your season. What did that do for your confidence, bro? Because I mean that had to be a huge boost of confidence, if I had to guess. Yeah, sure. He's like arguably the toughest guy in that tournament. It's like he, he is a hell of a fighter. He he is a hell of a like, yeah. he's a gamer. He That's it, bro. To, he likes it. He is uh he is a Sean Strickland. Like he yeah. goes in there because he likes, like, yeah, can kick ass. So yeah. that was fun. Uh, that was very, very fun. And mm-hmm. like, I think I felt so good in that fight. Like everything that he was doing, like I felt I have the answers. I, yeah. I was, I was good at giving that cross and doing all those things and. Like that that was a hell of a fight. Like I liked I liked what I see from myself in that yep. fight and should have let it go like I did like I did at my first fight in the second one, but uh I don't know. Uh mm-hmm. I don't know. I I thought Piccolo T was going a bit going to try it a bit more. Like if he wanted to be in the playoffs he he needed that finish. I thought like he was going to war, but he is a smart fighter. He went yeah. for for points, and I don't know, like I don't know what the judges see that night, but uh, yeah. I thought I won it. Of course, yeah, man. I mean, I was watching that fight, of course, and I'm not gonna lie. Like from obviously watching that fight, I think I think you had the the overall better performance, but this game is a game of inches, bro, as they say, you know. And when you watch the fight back, I'm sure you critiqued yourself. You critiqued him. What do you think after, like, obviously coming out of that fight, you thought you won, but you watch it over, you that give you even more confidence that you won the fight, or what were your thoughts after watching it? Yeah, I still believe uh, I did enough to win that fight. Mm-hmm. That was a very, uh, very controversial. I, I mean, I'm not going to lie, I thought you had rounds one, one and two easy. Yeah, me, me too. Like, yeah. like... That's the thing. Like the only judges that gave me the win was Chris Lieben, and he's like mm-hmm. a, leg- a legend in, in the sport. And the two other judges, I I don't know them, and yeah, I, I don't really care about who they are. But I what wh- when Lieben gave you the fight, like he he knows what it is. He know oh, yeah. what he, he knows what it takes to win a fight. But that that's something that pisses me off a bit. Like the judges that don't know shit about MMA, they don't even know how to spell MMA. So. That pisses me off, but mm-hmm. like it's on it's myself. Like I should have finished the fight. I should have yeah. done more. I should have done something. Like the little something I, I used to do and it, is finish the fight. Like when I get opportunities, to finish it. I, I'm a gamer. I finish fights, but mm-hmm. I don't know what that night. Uh, that, I felt yeah. shy. Yeah. yeah. You think the altitude played into anything in your performance, or just your gas tank, or anything? I mean, you you went you went hard all three rounds, bro. No, they didn't like yeah play on myself. I, I finished the fight. And I wasn't even exhausted at all. Yeah, but I, I, I could. That's a thing. Like, fuck. If the fight is too tight, it's too close to 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 give it a winner. Give yeah. me one more round. I'll do. I'll do enough. For yeah, fourth round to, to win it. Yeah. Um, I heard yeah. I heard some fighters say that the altitude was crazy, but others like you, maybe not so much. But for you, like I feel like that doesn't even matter because I still think you won the fight. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I have a problem <laughs> with my team. Like you know me, like yeah, for sure. I I can go hard for like I can go hard for five rounds. I don't care. Like mm-hmm. uh, I have the best cardio in that division, and I know it. It's not yeah. even close. Did you put any extra emphasis on the cardio going into Salt Lake City or not? It didn't. You didn't re- even have to. Yeah. No, nah, I pushed. I pushed twice yeah. as hard as I used yeah. to. Like, 
uh, like I talked with Olivier before to go to Salt Lake, and he was like, "Oh, I fell uh, in altitude once, and it was the hardest thing ever." So I was like, "Okay, mm-hmm. if you say so, I'm going to 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 get ready for that." So um, you had no best, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I wanted to ask you, man, what was going through your head while you were watching these other fights? Obviously, praying and hoping that everything would fall out the way it did and you'd clinch that spot. I mean, was it kind of like the mindset they say in other sports, like ball don't lie? You know what I mean? How did you? No, that's true. Yeah, You're right. Like, um, I remember that Renfro fight, Renfro against uh, Premise. Against, uh, Premise. Renfro started, almost clipped him, but he clipped him. Mm-hmm. And went back and forth and Renfro did good like on that mm-hmm. fight mm, bro at the end Premus won and I was like okay mm-hmm. one down like two to go and the second one the, the other one was um, a pit bull against uh, uh, um, fuck Miranda uh, Miranda fuck uh, that fight too banger. started the, the first minute bro I was like I was screaming like, slow down, <laughs> yeah. slow down, defense, think about your defense. But they, they, they didn't listen at me at all. No. They were like giving it all. But I, I heard Miranda, he, he hurt Susanna a bit, I think, in the first round. So, uh, yeah, that, that was a banger. Like, they were giving everything. They wanted to be in oh, the yeah. playoff. But oh, yeah. Like, I, I only needed six minutes, three seconds. On that fight, and after the first round, I started being confident, and like I think I think I count the last the, the last sixty three second. I count them like one, two, <laughs> two sixty three, and when the sixty three hit, I start running and mm-hmm. I saw the video, the viral video, yeah. and start screaming like crazy. Let's fucking go! Mm-hmm. That was fun. That was, that was an awesome moment. Like like you said, ball don't lie. And uh, I I got in because because of that fight. But like uh, the, the the fight, the, the last fight of the lightweight division was a uh, collared and collared lost the fight. So I would have been in either way. Right. But uh, still, like I'm happy I I I didn't had to wait until the yeah. end of the night. Yeah. To, to get in. I'll tell but, you. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Go. I was gonna say from from you, I wouldn't expect nothing less than that than that reaction. That's exactly what I would expect from someone like you. You know, that was and that was that was a good moment, bro. I know the emotions are high. I mean, you're riding on riding on that night, and that was that that's the season for you. So that's uh, that's very well expected. And the emotions, bro, is just the Michael Dufort. That's what that's what you get. You know. <laughs> Yeah, you, you should know. I like the bro. emotions you bring to the sport, bro. The, because you know you you let your emotions fly, and I feel like some people hold them back. But for you, it's if you're excited, we're gonna know that, and if you're yeah. mad, we're gonna know that yeah. too. Yeah, you yeah, that's it. You you know me now, so uh, that's pretty much it. Like you know what you get with my with, with the Canadian badass. Like you get emotion, and uh, that's it. I'm 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 like I'm true to myself, and. Uh, I'll not change it for nothing in the world. That's it, man. Let's let's talk about your next fight, bro. Hollywood, Florida, August sixteenth. I mean, man, you got to be excited. I know you're no stranger to Florida, but to have a fight out there, you must be pretty excited. How, what you been thinking about, you know, being out there? Oh man, I, honestly, I can't wait. Like I said, the third fight is the artist, and I don't yeah. need training camp. I like I like sixteen to be tomorrow. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm ready. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to bang. Um, like I said, training camp is hard, but there's no, no, no easy training camp. And when you're at that level in the, in the MMA game, like it will never be easy. Like I know, I, I know, P, I think PFL is the hardest thing in the sports. So, um, uh, I'm just ready. I just can't wait. Uh, I love my floor. Like I love kill cliff for sure. Mm-hmm. Like it, my second home now. Like it's sure. a gym I really like. I, I like a Henry Oof is a hell of a person. And uh yeah, yeah, it's honestly it's like fighting home. So yeah. I can't I can't wait to go there and have fun with all the people. Like I know the crowd will be uh there will be plenty of guy that I trained with in the crowd. So that's um, right. It will be fun. It will be fun to to celebrate with them after and 
to 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 do a master class. That's it, my man. Well, let's talk about your opponent, Godzi Ramadanov. He's no stranger to that Bellator PFL cage. He's a veteran of the Bellator cage, and he has six of his last seven victories by decision. You spoke about that earlier. He, you know, you're a guy who goes out there to finish. So I want to ask you, man, what's your analysis of Godzi Ramadanov like? A very good fighter. Um, he has a good blast double. Um, he's good with a si- single, simple combination like jab cross, mm-hmm. uh, cross hook. Uh, no simple thing. He does the simple thing, but he does it good. And he is a good wrestler. I think he'll try to wrestle me at the end of every round. So I'll just be ready, man. Like I said, I'll be ready to stop every takedown. Every time he's going for a takedown, I'll be ready to wel- welcome him with, with the stuff and try to land some bomb in, in that face. Like, um, I'll, I'll hurt him on the feet. Like, the, the plan is to... I, I want the fight to be dirty, man. I don't mm-hmm. want a clean fight to be dirty. I'm going there to... To give him everything I got, like he will see how big and how how strong I am. I'm a true lightweight. I used to fight a featherweight. I'm the same. We're not the same animal, and I proved it once. I proved it like so many times. Actually, like I am a fighter that when I'm stronger than my opponent, like he feels it and he doesn't like it. So yeah. that's the plan. I want him to feel my power. There you go, man. I like it. I think you've done a good job of that in the past for sure, like you said. Um, but tell me, Michael, does anything change? How do you how do you and your approach change, if anything, when you have a guy who has fought to so many decisions? Like, you know, what do you think about that considering you like to go out there for the finish? Yeah. Um uh, I'll put the pace so high, so you'll not you'll not be able to do three rounds. Um because and you know me, like I hate decision. Like if you look at my record, yeah. I'm one and five in decision. Ridiculous. Like I lost, like I think I lost like five split decision. That's ridiculous. Like mm-hmm. so, it's never, it's never super. Like it's never simple to give a decision. But like I, I, I do the fight. I I make are dirty. So. If you don't really know MMA, like you don't know who won, so that you, you just give a card, like, and you, you don't really know anything, like. But um, yeah, I'm planning on making making that fight as ready as I can. So let's go. It's gonna be a banger out there in Hollywood, Florida. I'm looking forward to seeing that performance, man. Um, but we spoke back in March. You said that you were looking forward to surprising everyone, and that it's easy to impress when you're the underdog. To me, to me, you're a man of your words. I mean, let's let's not even consider the last split decision. Like just the performances that you've been reeling off, the evolution of your game is crazy, you know. And I think you've been surprising, you know. You've been surprising everyone and win or lose, one win, one loss, in each performance, still surprising people, right? That you are, you know, you can hang with these guys because before you, you know, you're only two fights into this huge, re, you know, uh, intercontinental promotion, and before that you were fighting, you know, Massachusetts, not local, but you were fighting regionally, and now, now, t- you know, we're talking two fights later, you're two fights away from a million dollars, which is crazy. How, do you believe that you've been doing a good job of not only surprising people but impressing people? Yeah, I think, I think. There's not a man that will take the, my name uh, easy now. Uh, they, they all know who I am, and they should know who I am. Like even Gadzi, I I hope he's getting ready for a banger because I'm I'm gonna bring that. I'm going to bring the fight to him. Like that's what I do best. So. Mm-hmm. And like you said, I like to be underdog. I like to make people lie and. I like to prove people wrong. Like, give me those hearts. Put me, put me <laughs> under dog, and I'll show you how good I am. That's uh, you tell me that every time, and I always back it up too, man. So very impressive, very respectable. I want to ask you about training, man. I know obviously H two O MMA. How's my man Richard doing? And I hope you know everybody at, at the gym that I've come across and met, interacted with, is doing well. Everybody doing well over there? Yeah, everybody's doing well. Uh, 
we're, re- we're, we're like we're confident on that fight. Um, I have my friend he, he is the perfect guy to to do the same. Like he, he has the same blast double than Gadzi. He has the same little blitz than Gadzi. He, he is the perfect guy to to train with. So I'm training with him right now. Uh, Richard is is doing good too. I I think to to uh, to have my head on the good spot and that that that's what important. I want to be like mentally ready, and Richard's doing good at this. Great to hear. Great to hear. And OAM was at the last fight, obviously, and I don't think he was at the first one though. So it looks like he might have came into that second fight. Has he been involved with this camp at all, or has he been? I know he's been taking some time for his family too, but you know he was at the last fight. So I'm wondering what his involvement with the season and your camps has been like, if anything. Yeah, we're 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 supposed to talk uh, soon. He's coming back from uh, Portugal pretty soon, so uh, we're supposed to have a talk soon. Um, he's always part of it. Like yeah. if it's not like from from exchanging punch, it's from him talking to me. Uh, it's from his uh, knowledge of the game. It's from w- what he what he what he can tell me. What he can make me learn. Uh, yeah, he's. He's a good friend and he's a good mentor to me. And how about GSP? I, I, I know you talked about him last fight. Has he been helping you this for this season as well? Yeah, lately, lately he's been he's been there uh, for me. Uh, we worked a couple of things that uh, I wanted his uh, expertise to 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 help me. And uh, like I, I said that so many times, when George tell you something, you you better make it like good because mm-hmm. he, he, know, he knows it works so don't don't argue you just do it and uh, trust the process and uh, trust the process and uh, it will work definitely and those are that that the team you have over there is just amazing like the guys who have done this been there done that true world champions it's awesome and now you have you know you got a ufc champion uh, a PFL champion, and you know, with that man, you can't go wrong, right? Amen. That's it. Uh, you know, for you, Michael, I know life has had to have been gotten, you know, awesome. It's been a huge, uh, I guess, blessing to be a part of the PFL for you, right? How has things changed for you, whether it be financially, brand deals? I know you're working, <laughs> working with places, but. You have, I'm sure you're a lot more financially comfortable now that you know, you know, to every two months you'll be getting a check and keep doing things right. A million dollars at the end of it. I'm not thinking about money. Like, I honestly, I haven't even touched a single penny of on that money. Like, That's I just great. want to still have that Rocky mentality. Like, you, you everybody's seen uh, Rocky Four. When, when you get like, when, when you get in fucking, uh, in, in a nice villa and everything, that like, that's when like you start training like a bitch, and uh, I don't want to. I don't want to think about that. Yeah. Like I want to want to bring like I I like my life like it is right now, and uh, uh, I don't like I don't fight for money. I fight for pride. Of course, and that's that's what I'm doing right now. I'm I'm just fucking going to fuck win that fight to to to. To, to fucking avenge that that loss I got, I yeah. just got. You got to be making better money than the regional scene, so you got to be a little happy about about being a little bit more comfortable. <laughs> no, I'll be happy with that, Millie. That's it, bro. Of course, and I wanted to ask you, especially my question was more towards about like getting more opportunities, brand deals, bro. I feel like are you working with more companies now, like Dude Wipes and stuff like like that? Are you are you working with them, bro? It's so hard uh, here in Montreal, like. To, to get sponsors, yeah. <laughs> honestly, it pain in the ass. So, how about I'm not the beer? Even... The beer is something awesome, bro. Is that a sponsor? Is yeah. that a, like a collaboration? Yeah, th- but that's the thing. Like th- those people, like it's not the big, big company that are right. that are good, that are that are are great. That it's it's a small one. They are yeah. the one that wants to help. But like small company that that doesn't have like all the money in the world. So. Uh, it's more like collab. It's cool thing like that, but I really mm-hmm. like it. Definitely. Like, yeah, yeah, that's it. Real recognize real, and those are real guys. Those are real cool. 
Of course, man. I love the design on the beer can, bro. That's awesome. Very cool, huh? Yeah, awesome. And the one from Cage Titans was super cool too, man. So you you're yeah. appear, starting to appear on a couple beer cans, which is cool. Bro, and I, I, I I should have my own fucking beer brand, like. I should I should think about this. <laughs> yeah, man, that would be a cool endeavor for you, bro. Because obviously, you know, you're already on a couple cans, and and you know, you have the, you have like a the personality to promote it, stuff like that. That would be something super cool. Yeah, thank you, bro. Yes, sir. Um, obviously, you talked about coming for that million dollars, but now I wanted to ask you one last question before I let you go, man. What can fans expect from you, the Canadian bad badass? on August 16th when you step into that cage in the semifinals of this 2024 season in Hollywood, Florida? An angry guy that hasn't heat for a while, bro. I'm going I'm going there to heat. I'm going there to for a neck. I'm going for the neck. Once I grab it, I squeeze it, and I don't let it go until, like, the ref stop me. Uh, I'm going to do like I did to Luis Pena, like, grab it and squeeze as hard as I can. That's my plan. That's it, man. I like I like the way you're approaching this. I think you have the perfect mindset to get this job done and march on to a million dollars. You know, for me, I'm always wishing you the best. But now that I now that we've gone through this, I wanted to ask you one. I just came to mind one more question. Uh, you know, the other That's side, cool. the other side of that that semifinal bracket, bro. What do you think is going to play out? How do you see that fight going? Shoot. Obviously, it doesn't matter to you. You want you're gonna your plan is to get through anybody, but. How do we see that that other br- side of the bracket going? It's funny. It's the new gen on one side of the bracket, and it's the fat on the other yeah. side. Um, honestly, uh, for the storyline of PFL, I'd like to fight Blake Blake Hollard in, in the final. Yeah, because Blake right, just lost to Olivia last year and was a big show, and he's a he's a big name in the in the PFL organization. So for sure, I'd like to fight him. He, I really like his style. He's a really good fighter. He's a good dude. Uh, I like to fight him, but still, premise, premise too, man. It's yeah, uh, you guys match up well that, too. Yeah, that I think I think that the the, the best matchup is me against premise. Yeah, because if you got me against Collard, is it, it, it's the striker against the grappler. So right, it, not as fun as if you have like two kingpin in their in their discipline. Right, um, and he's a legend too. He, he got that. Ben Arthur Belt, he beat Michael Chandler. He fought. Right. He's a hell of a fighter. Like, yeah. Uh, I don't really care who's winning that fight. Um, I think it's like two cool dudes uh, just doing what they they what they do best, and uh, but I can't wait. Like, yeah. Like, Either uh, way, you'll be happy. Fun. Either yeah. way, I'll be happy. Yeah. Two great fights potentially, man. But obviously. For, I don't make to, I don't want to make you think too far ahead. I appreciate you giving me some thoughts on that, but I know your focus is strictly on Godzi Rabadonov at this time. So thank you, man. Thanks, Dylan. Uh, of course, always good to talk to you. That's right, bro. Always appreciate the time, yeah. man. It's crazy. It's fun to fun to think about how less than a year ago, me and you were in the Cage Titans. You know room i got to meet some of the some of the canadians out there they were they were awesome to hang out with after the fight and now look at you bro competing in the season couldn't be any more happy for you brother you're making the most of this opportunity yeah i appreciate it yes sir